holy name. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Hallelujah. It's an awesome privilege to be speaking with you, the saints of the living God, this evening. Hallelujah. As you join, I'm going to ask that you hit that share button. There are a few things that I'd like us to cover this evening. Hallelujah. In fact, I'm going to ask you to grab your notepads as well as your pens or pencils just now because there are some things that we need to jot down as we edify each other in this virtual space. Just a gentle reminder, the broadcast is streamed every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday on my Facebook page, my TikTok page, as well as my YouTube channel. It's streamed at 7.30 p.m. New York time glory to God. And so if you have not yet familiarized yourself with all three of my platforms, I'm going to ask that you do so as quickly as possible. Why are we getting the word out and why is there such urgency? Because of the time in which we are. This generation is very critical. We're going to be ushering some things, hallelujah, in hallelujah and we also have to be mindful of the fact that there are a lot of prophetic utterances that were made pertaining to our generation and so we have to be very much attuned to what the spirit of the lord is doing and what he wills to be done at this time now if you are from saint kitts Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, Barbados, if you're from the UK, if you're from Jamaica, if you're from Canada, if you are from the United States, if you're from Africa, Botswana, Nigeria, South Africa, hallelujah, Ghana, Ethiopia, Kenya, you name it. If you're from Australia, hallelujah, or somewhere in Asia, if you're watching from India, wherever, this particular broadcast is for you. Hallelujah. Now, again, as you join, I'm going to ask you to quickly hit that share button as we cover some kingdom matters. Uh, Sonia, Alma, Blue, Brother John, Ankist, please, uh, Nana, Derika, Beverly, Ivy. As soon as you join, make sure you are liking and you are sharing. Georgina, make sure you're doing same. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this amazing opportunity you have provided. Lord, I ask that your spirit will increase in me. I thank you that everything that will be shared, hallelujah, will be done to your honor and glory. I thank you, Father, that you will be removing scales from the eyes of many. I thank you, Father, that ears are already opened to hear what your spirit has to say to us. Father, I thank you that whatever you will to say to us in this space, Lord God, will not fall on deaf ears or will not, hallelujah, go unnoticed and unexecuted, Father, but you will see these things through even if it means you rising up, oh God, in us, hallelujah, a, 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 a power and a depth of your power, Lord, that will cause us to just not stay still, but to ensure that whatever you say, hallelujah, is indeed done and done in its right time and season. And so, Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, hallelujah. Just going to ask people to just kind of hold off on the, the calls and messages on WhatsApp for a moment. Thank you so much. Now, let's get into some stuff. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, we're talking about God's purpose for a nation, God's purpose for a people. Now, if you have been following the conversation I've been having with you on social media, then you would, you know, be attuned and aware of where I'm headed. You would understand that God is actually speaking, especially to our island, Jamaica, but there's something that he wants other people to take from what he's about to do and will be sharing in our midst all right now ethnos when you talk about ethnos you're talking about groups of people 
Hallelujah. That's what the word nation actually means. When you look at it in scripture, the word nation actually means ethnos. Ethnos speaks of a people or groups or a race, a tribe or a multitude of individuals, but they have the same nature or genus. God is interested in ethnos. He's interested in nature, rather nations. Now, if you look in scripture, one of the charges that has been given to even the Jewish people or the Israelites is that his house shall be a house of prayer for the nations. Okay, there is a scripture that speaks to it. Let's go to Mark chapter 11, verse 17. The Bible says, then he taught saying to them, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? So it didn't stop at prayer. He did not just say my house must be a house of prayer. But he has specified that it needs to be prayer for the nations. Why? Because God has always had a plan for the nations. If you can recall, one of the things that was said to Abraham in the Abrahamic covenant is that all nations of the earth shall be blessed because of him. Don't it? So therefore, God has always had a grand plan for the nations. So there is no nation that is here by coincidence. There is no nation that has been formed and formed where it has been formed by coincidence. The spirit of the Lord knows exactly why. He is the one who is behind all this. He is the mastermind behind nation building in terms of structure, geographical location, etc., so I want us to know that every nation is important to the living God. Tell two people, not only are nations important, but they serve a purpose. And we have to find out from the living God what his purpose is for the nation in which we are living. Now, here's the other thing that I'm going to say to us tonight. You see, when it comes to nations, God has appointed prophets to nations. Are you hearing me? There are prophets that have been assigned to nations and this is not something new. This is something that has been around from ancient days, from Old Testament days. God would have raised up prophets who were assigned to be his mouthpiece at certain places or in a certain place. Hallelujah. Now, we know that we are under a new dispensation through Christ. And we know that whereas, you know, a lot of things that would have been given to the prophet, a lot of instructions and so on that were given to the prophets and, and the heavy weight that was given to the prophets then might have been alleviated a little bit because of what Christ has done at the cross. Glory to God. Because now his spirit is being poured upon all flesh. And so we don't necessarily have to go through the prophet in order to get certain communication across when it comes to us and God. So let's say the weight of the prophet has kind of been lightened a bit, but the relevance remains. There is still a need for the prophet in the land. Although Christ went to the cross and we now have direct access where we can go on our knees and pray. We don't even have to kneel these days. We can just stay where we are and talk to God. But there is still a significant role that the prophet plays. That's the reason why when Christ was giving his gifts to the church, one of the gifts Christ gave was the gift of the prophet. The Bible says, and he gave unto the church, this is according to Ephesians chapter 4, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. Prophets were listed among those. So just in case we thought that God has been done away with the, the idea of having prophets, it cannot be because one of the gifts given to us by Christ is the gift of having a prophet in our midst. So therefore, the role of the prophet is still significant. The role of the prophet today, might be it's not as significant as it was then, probably due to the, the measure of work that is expected to be done. 
However, the prophetic office is still relevant. God has still raised up people to be his mouthpiece. God has still assigned these individuals to represent nations. Hallelujah. They're still necessary. So if people are going to ask and debate whether or not prophets are relevant, the answer is yes. If prophets were not relevant, they would not have been named among what we know as the fivefold ministry. Glory to God. These are the gifts Christ has given to us. The Holy Spirit has given us gifts, but the gifts of the Holy Spirit are intangible. They've come in the form of the working of miracles, the speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues. They come in the form of the gift of faith. They come in the form of the discerning of spirits, the word of wisdom and word of knowledge, and also the gift of prophecy. And even so, I want us to understand that even though there is the gift of prophecy listed among one of the nine gifts given to us by the Holy Spirit, there is still the gift of the prophet. Let us make a note that the Holy Spirit has given to us a gift called prophecy. So there is a prophetic gift given to us by the Holy Spirit. This is intangible, but I want us to realize in the same breath that Christ, on the other hand, another member of the Godhead has also given to us gifts. Whereas the Holy Spirit has given us nine gifts, Christ has given us five, or if you want to call it four, fine. Why four? Because many will argue that the pastor and the teacher go together. Whether you want to separate them or put them together, the same scripture we're referring to in Ephesians chapter 4. So the Holy Spirit has given us how many gifts? Nine. Christ has given us how many? Five. But the Holy Spirit's gifts are intangible, while Christ's gifts come in the form of a person. So the pastor is a gift from Christ. Whenever you see your pastor, tell yourself, I'm looking at a gift that God has given to us through Christ. Whenever you see the apostle, know this, that that's a gift that God gave to the church. Okay? Whenever you see the evangelist, see the evangelist as a gift. Christ has given he or she to the church. Are you hearing me? And that is why we don't talk to them just anyhow. That is why we don't scandalize them and disrespect them anyhow. Because these are gifts that have been given. Now let me go back to the point that I was establishing earlier. The prophet is a gift. Even as we have a prophetic gift from the Holy Ghost... We have to realize that there is also the gift of the prophet himself, the person, the personality. This gift was given to us by Christ. The fact that God has given to us the prophet as a gift means that this gift through the person serves a purpose. And I'm here to say to us that when it comes to ethnos, nations, the prophet serves an important role and purpose in any nation, okay? There is a prophet assigned to each nation. There might be several or a few, but I want to believe that there are main prophets assigned to a particular territory, just like it was Back in the time of the Old Testament, are you hearing me? There was Haggai, there was Isaiah. What you would realize is that many of these prophets, whether they were major prophets or minor prophets, sometimes their ministries were occurring in parallel. They were occurring at the same time. So Haggai had a ministry while Jeremiah had a ministry. Are you hearing me? So it is possible that more than one prophet can be assigned to the same nation. But I want us to understand 
that there usually is a main prophet at a certain time in the history of that nation or in the life of that nation. Where are we going with this? If it is that we know that God has assigned prophets to nations, what do I mean? Let me break it down because I love to break down stuff, don't it? That means if you live in the Cayman Islands, there is a prophet assigned to that island. If you live in the Turks and Caicos, there is a prophet assigned to that island. Hallelujah. If you live in the Bahamas, there is at least one prophet assigned to that territory. Are you hearing me? And if God has assigned a prophet to a territory, we as the people who reside in that territory have a responsibility to know who the individual is or who these individuals are. Are you hearing me? Now, let me show you something even through the book of 1 Samuel. Now, let's turn our Bibles quickly to 1 Samuel chapter 3. And we're going to be reading from verse 19 to 20. That's 1 Samuel 3, 19 to 20. Please just put this in the comments as you join Hallelujah, you're welcome to hit that share button. In fact, if you have not yet done so, please go ahead and do that for the benefit of our friends who need to hear. Of course, you know, because of the various uh, attacks from all these scammers pretending to be Shadeen, they have somewhat divided up uh, those people who usually join. Because now they have all these groups called Shedding Anglin Prayer Line, Shedding Anglin this and all that. And I do not associate with any of those things. Okay. And so as a result, people's attention, of course, this is what the enemy has always wanted, has been diverted. And so every time we come, please just make sure you share, share, share so that they can see pop up somewhere on their feed. Okay. First Samuel 3. 19 to 20. Now, the word reads thus. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that God had established Samuel to be a prophet. I think I need to read that again. Let's read verse 20 again. And all Israel from Dan, even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Where are we going with this? You need to start asking the Lord to open up your eyes to see who the prophet or prophets of your territory are. As it pertains to Samuel, the Bible says that all of Israel, therefore everyone knew who their prophet was. Everyone knew who was the authentic or legitimate spokesperson for Jehovah. They all knew that this person was Samuel. If God has raised up prophets in your territory, it is important that you know who the prophet is or the prophets are. Sometimes you will have to depend on getting a revelation because these individuals will not necessarily come out and say, I am a prophet of the Lord. No. Sometimes it's going to take you getting a divine revelation from the Holy Spirit himself so that you may know who these people are. Why do you need to know, know who the prophets are? Because it is through the minds of the prophets that Jehovah will reveal unto that nation his plans at a certain time 
or point. Are you hearing me? Remember, God has a plan for ethnos, nations. And along the way, he will speak certain things. He will show certain things. There are certain things he will want to accomplish. And the Bible says that he does nothing without what? Revealing them to the prophet. So if he's about to do something good, he'll show the prophet. If he's about to cause devastation, he likewise show the prophet. You need to know who the prophet is who has been assigned to your territory so that you can prepare. Because if the prophet of the Lord, I'm not talking about the fakes. I'm talking about the anointed and appointed prophet of the living God. Hallelujah. One who has been commissioned by Christ and has been given to the church as a gift according to Ephesians 4 verse 11. 11 to 12 tells us what these people are and their purpose, the role they play in your growth etc when you know who these individuals are if god say yeah you'll be prepared for yeah and if god says nay you likewise be prepared for nay are you hearing me are you hearing me family now, I want to point out something important. I want you to put on your screen prophets and seers. Prophets and seers. S-E-E-R-S -E -E for seers. Now, please make a note of this. Because there are some seers in our midst. And there are some prophets in our midst. Watch this. Every seer is a prophet, but not every prophet is a seer. Let's do that again. Please type this in the comments. Every seer is a prophet, but not every prophet is a seer. Let's break it down. Seers. As the term suggests, notice that before you got to the end of the spelling, you would have already seen S-E-E-C. -E Do you notice that you, you, you find the word C coming out of seers? Seers are people who are presented with all these objects, symbols, and visuals. God speaks to them through signs. And the, the sense that is most activated when God speaks to these people is their sight. They're, they're seeing. They see. So seers see. So if you are somebody who is seeing, okay, you are a seer, of course you are a prophet. All seers are prophets. Remember. God does not speak to all of us the same way. God not, does not speak to all prophets in the same way. There are some prophets who will be seeing, while there will be some prophets who will be hearing. And you know what? There are some prophets who are, who are sometimes neither seeing nor hearing, but, but when they get on the spot, when, when they open up their mouths, it's just flowing. Right on the spot. See, before they got to the location, they didn't even know that they were going to say anything. Before they arrived, they didn't know what to say. They were called upon to minister or they were sent to a particular church. God just said, go to Waltham Park Church today. The individual just simply follows God's instructions and ends up in the congregation at Waltham Park Church. They don't know why they were sent there. The Lord did not say, say so and so. Nothing was said. Nothing was instructed except to go there. But the moment the individual arises or arrives, the words just start to flow. 
Thus saith the Lord, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Thus saith the Lord, your pastor is ill and within few days he will be taken away from you. Begin to prepare for a second pastor or a replacement, etc. Thus saith the Lord, X, Y, Z. Thus saith the Lord, the altar needs to be cleansed. Thus saith the Lord, the intercessors need to be meeting more often. Thus saith the Lord, X, Y, Z. The person did not plan all of this and didn't hear these things before they arrived. But right on the spot, the words just started coming. So they never got a chance to see nor hear. So there are some prophets who flow like that. But whether you see or hear, or you don't, or you, you have all three experiences, they're prophets. But as we're saying, whereas all seers are prophets, not all prophets are seers. Because if God speaks to you through your hearing, whenever God is giving you a word, he causes you to hear in the spirit. You don't really see. You don't see. He, he uses your ear. So if God wants to communicate something to you about Shadeen Anglin, he opens up your ears and you hear him. You don't see. You hear. You are not a seer. But you're a prophet. So that is why all seers are prophets, but not all prophets are seers because not all prophets are communicated or receive of communication in that form. Some will only hear. Some will only see. Some will on the spot flow and some will function all three ways. Are you hearing me? While I am sharing this with you, it is important that you begin to ask yourself the question, am I a prophet? Am I a prophet? And if you are a prophet, begin to ask the question, what kind of prophet are you? What kind of prophet am I? Hallelujah. The prophets are very important because when God is going to move a certain way in a territory, on the land, he's going to reveal these things to his prophets. We need to have a revelation of who the authentic individuals are through whom the Spirit of God is speaking. Why? Because when critical times come, we don't want to be confused. You see, when God is speaking, we better know that it's God speaking, you know. Because I don't want nobody come tell me, say, there's a famine coming and how I need to store up on cans and all them things. And next thing you know, I spend every dime storing up on cans and then there's no famine. I don't want nobody tell me, said there's going to be a volcano up here and everybody start to flee from rural Jamaica to, to, to Kingston, Jamaica. And there you have it, congestion and confusion. And then no volcano comes. So it's important that we get our revelation. Tell two people, we need a revelation of the prophet or prophets of our land. The other thing that I'll say is this, and it's tying to what I mentioned earlier about the people of Israel when it came to knowing Samuel and understanding his ministry. Leaders of a country ought to know who the prophets of the land are. Leaders of a country need to know who the prophets are. Did you know that in the Old Testament, okay, that the kings usually knew who God's prophets were? Did you know 
that the kings in the Old Testament usually had knowledge of who the prophet of the land was. There was a king who said about Elisha, are you the one who's causing trouble in our land? Why did he say such a thing to God's servant? Because every time this king was planning something that was out of order and alignment, it was revealed to the prophet. And if revealed to the prophet, the prophet has the power to intercept what needs to be intercepted and loose what needs to be loosed. If there is a leader, watch this. If there is a leader, okay, who does not have a clue about the prophet assigned to that land, then that leader is walking in the path of Saul. And do you know what happened to Saul's? See, Saul did not know who Samuel was. The Bible says Saul did not know Samuel. Everybody knew Samuel. How come he did not? And when you are a Saul who don't know your Samuel, guess what happens? You're going to find yourself in some places you ought not to be. He found himself in the house of a witch. He found himself in the house of a little sorcerer. Because there comes a time when we need to know, we need to have insight, don't it? There comes a time when we want to understand what is in the heart of God toward us as individuals. And, and when it comes to leaders, the leader wants to know what God is saying about the land and people he's leading. If you don't know who your Samuel is, you're going to end up consulting with a witch, a wizard or a sorcerer. And some will pose in the name of the Lord. And they'll give bad counsel. They'll give deceitful counsel. And if the counsel you are receiving is incorrect or faulty, then your leadership will also be faulty. Anybody understands? So the people need to know who their Samuel is and the leader, the king needs to know as well. We're not just talking about people with the prophetic gift. We're talking about the prophet, the prophet, the person of the prophet. Let me tell you something about the prophet. You see the prophet? Let me just say this. Do not have impractical and unrealistic expectations of the prophet. A prophet is just a prophet. A prophet is a prophet. In other words, <laughs> my God, this is so powerful. You know what? Let's just go to Ephesians chapter 4 quickly. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he gave some apostles, prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Listen, you see the prophet? 
don't expect the prophet to be evangelizing like traveling on on the bus and and going out handing out tracks every day i'm not saying that he cannot do that but we have to understand that sometimes when we don't understand the role and purpose of an individual and especially as it pertains to the gift of Christ one falling hallelujah among these five groups listed here if we don't understand their role and their function we're going to have some expectations of these individuals that will not be met the prophet either sees what God shows him or hears. The prophets have a relationship with the living God. In fact, all members, okay, of the fivefold, what we deem as the fivefold as listed here in Ephesians 4 verse 11, they ought to have a relationship with the living God. Are you hearing me? But sometimes when we come out of our box and we step out of our lane, our duties are not done excellently because we are too busy attending to things about which we have no concern. If God has called you to be an apostle, be an apostle. Don't try to be a prophet at the same time. Because see, the prophet is just a prophet. If you're an apostle, be an apostle. Okay? If you're a pastor, be a pastor. Let me, let me just say this to you, my wonderful friends and family watching me. My name is Shadeen Anglin. And I'm not a pastor. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a pastor. Do not expect me to carry out pastoral duties. I'm not called as a pastor. I'm not. Tell two people, Shadeen is not a pastor. That's not my office. Okay? I respect pastors so much. I salute every pastor watching this broadcast. I love you. I appreciate you. We love you. We need you. But I am not a pastor. I'm not called to the office of the pastor. And so many times when we don't understand roles and functions in the kingdom, we misassign people. As a matter of fact, we are not even supposed to be assigning people if the assignment does not come from does not come rather from Christ. cannot be a pastor so if you are prophet mark you better remain prophet mark don't make them appoint you to go be no pastor if jesus has called you to be prophet because see let me tell you something you think pastor work easy you think to be a shepherd you think anybody can just get up and be a shepherd Tell two people, in order for you to be a shepherd, you got to have the heart of a shepherd. So if you're going to sit in this seat to be called a pastor, you better make sure that you have the heart of one. If you're a prophet, be a prophet. Stop trying to be a pastor. Because you better understand that as part of the responsibility of a pastor is he has to have watch over the sheep. If you have no time for the sheep and no love for the sheep, do not accept that ordination to be a prophet. We miss it. We, 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 we're doing a mismatch and it, it's not going to work. Are you hearing me, family? Is there anyone who understands or you don't understand? Shiba yi kuribiota. Ripandi kasandi de bashataya koto ribikata. Let's not try to go and take the role on or take on the role because the, the position sounds good. Some things that pastors 
are able to endure, me I tell you, prophet can't endure. Some things that pastor has to endure. You see, some things that prophet will run away from. Prophet comes into church and delivers the word that he get, he got or is supposed to deliver. And him gone home. Maybe while he's delivering the word, deliverance is taking place. And some people are being ministered to. Maybe some people are crying and are weak and etc. When prophet can take up him bag and gone home because he did his part, which was to release the word. You think the pastor can take up bag and go lock door and gone home and yeah, gonna eat Sunday dinner? Huh? While the sheep, while the sheep is there suffering and is in need of his attention, you think the pastor can go, go jump in and big jeep and drive away and leave God's sheep there? You think the pastor can pass sheep, lie down pan ground and cry hungry and have no food? You think the pastor can do that? So anybody who loves take on the title of pastor because it sounds good, you like the name of, of, of the pastoral office, let me tell you something. You see, if you're going to get called for it, do not take it. You see, if Jesus Christ did not raise you up and commission you to be that, do not take it on because you're going to be judged. You see, if you're lackadaisical, you see, if you are someone who, do, who cannot tolerate people or you can't, if you don't love people in general, you cannot be a pastor. You see, the apostles, apostles plant churches. Apostles don't sit on in a one church. Apostles do not sit in one church for 20 years, 40 years. You see, if you're never called to be an apostle, by the mercies of the living God, do not allow man to force you into the position or push you into it. You see, if Christ did not ordain you to do this thing, do not take it on. Don't, don't allow people to coerce you into this thing and to tell you all them things that they see, some of them not seeing a thing. If you're called to a particular office, the Lord has a way of allowing you to know. He'll confirm it with you. He'll show it to you first. You'll see. You'll know. So when somebody says, Shanique, I'm feeling very strongly that the Lord wants you to be an apostle. You're supposed to say, my spirit bears witness. Because I've been seeing it in my visions and dreams. Anybody understands what I'm saying? Is this making any sense? I diverted a little bit, but let me go back to the main point. If there is a prophet in the land, you are supposed to know who that prophet is or who they are if there are more than one. The leader of the country, the leaders should know should know now in my message yesterday in my short clip and even the one i did today i alluded to the name change it's very strong in my spirit that we should have a name change for jamaica how many of us know that the country new zealand is actually changing its name it's in the process of getting a name change how many of us know may i see the show of hands or may i see you indicate in the comments new zealand is getting a name change i want you to type in the comments as follows type the word new zealand and i want you to put a hyphen and then you're going to put what i'm explaining after the name New Zealand dash. Here's what it means. Of course, the word new, it means new, meaning fresh. 
It wasn't there a long time ago, so it's new. So new is a description, and we all know what new means. Z land. You see that? Z, Z E A? It's C S E A. So New Zealand is New Sea Land. But now they're in the process of getting a name change. Here is what it's about to be called. And this is if they finalize with um, agreeing and approving the name change. Please type this word in the comments and also put the hyphen for the definition. A-O-T-E-A-R-O-A. -E -O -O I think I was too fast. Let me do that again. A-O-T-E-A-R-O-A. Aotearawa. 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 New Zealand is about to be called Aotearawa. What does Aotearawa mean? Aotearawa means the land of the long white cloud. Hallelujah. The land of the long white cloud. Now let's interpret that prophets. I did put in the title calling all intercessors and prophets. We're engaging now. Let's do this together. We're breaking it down. Now, white clouds or white cloud. White in scripture usually represents what? Purity. Amen. White speaks to, you know, being cleansed, etc. We recall that even when, let's refer to a random scripture. Second Chronicles chapter 5. In that account, King Solomon was speaking about the ceremony that was had when he was opening up the temple for the first time. He talked about how the singers, they were dressed in white. White means they were cleansed and they would have gone through the necessary ceremonies according to the law in order to be deemed as clean before the priest. Okay? Now, when we talk about white, it is sometimes used to refer to the glory of God. Did you hear me talk about how the Lord Jesus, when I saw him, how there was this white light coming from him? Now, watch this. The adjective white is before the word cloud. But the cloud itself, white cloud, okay, has always in and of itself represented or glory to God, spoken to the glory of God. The Bible talks about how the cloud followed them by day. A pillar of cloud followed them, them by day. And a pillar of fire by night. That cloud is the glory of the living God. And if you look in the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. There's also reference that is made to the cloud. Glory to the living God. The white cloud speaks of God's glory. Every time you see white cloud in scripture, it's the glory of God that is being referred to. It's the glory of God that is being represented. It's the glory of God that is being manifested or talked about. And so what you find is that there is a nation, an ethnos right now, that is getting rid of New Zealand to adopt the land of the glory of God. If New Zealand can change its name, so 
can Jamaica. If you have a name that's doing nothing for you, change your name. The prophets of the Lord, they are the ones who understand the mind of Jehovah. When the prophets of the Lord go to God and pray, usually they, they're on the same page. They don't have to know each other. But usually it's the same spirit that is speaking to them, of course. So it's the same message that they're carrying. They're getting the same revelation. They might not see, see it rather in the exact way. But it's the same revelation that they get. Who needs to see it is seeing it. Who needs to hear it is hearing it. But it's the same revelation. The prophet of a nation is like the watchman. The prophet of the nation is the one who is supposed to reveal to the nation and its leaders the heart of God for the nation. If the spirit of God is grieved, it's the prophet's responsibility to make the land or the people of the land know that God is grieved. If he wants to change the name of the nation, he will deposit it into the spirit of the prophet. And if there are more than one prophet, and I'm saying to you that they will all get the revelation. Not only will he reveal, by the way, that there is a name change that should be done. But by prayer, hallelujah, he will give them the new name. Intercessors. Some of you have settled with the reference of intercessor. You identify with being an intercessor. But I want to say to many of you who are listening, some of you who have been called intercessors, you are not just intercessors, but some of you, you are actually prophets. Again, I'm not talking about those of you who have the gift of prophecy. There are way more people who have the gift of prophecy than there are prophets. A church can be filled with people who have the gift of prophecy, but has just one prophet. Are you hearing me? I'm not talking about those people with the gift. I'm talking about the few people who God has ordained as prophets. This is who they are. Right now as we speak, let me show you something that is so unfortunate. Right now as we speak, okay, there is a prophet somewhere, okay, who has a cigar in his mouth. Who is talking them bad man talk with his friends right now. Yo, man, and I'm out, yeah. And I'm a swag and I'm a, yeah. In the realm of the spirit, the devil knows who he is. It's just he who does not yet know. Right now in his bad company, whenever he opens up his mouth, this, the thing happens. So here's what his friends say. In Jamaica, they have a way of saying, you have goat mouth. Because everything he says comes to pass. They, they, they're sensing that there's something about this guy, but, and they're wondering why they're even taking instructions from him. 
It's like he's a leader wherever he goes, even while he's out there not realizing and knowing who he is before God. He's still leading and he can't explain why a bunch of people follow him everywhere he goes. There's a prophetess too. Who they say the same thing about you. You have good mouth. Every time something is going to happen in your community, you see it. Every time something is going to happen in your family, you see it. You're probably a seer prophet. But right now you're still a God party and you're still a wine up, wine up. And you you know, you, yeah, yeah, lipstick and yeah, and yeah. Because you don't yet know who you are. And a lot of the people who are in the church, who we are calling prophets and prophetesses, they are not. They have the gift given to them by the Holy Ghost, but they are not the gift of Christ. What am I saying? That's why we have to pray. Because some of the true prophets, they're out there. Some of the true prophets, we pass them on the street and them look like some mad people or some people who we love to condemn. Because many of us, we like to condemn people to hell. Without knowing the individual, just because they're not wearing the long frock like you, just because they don't dress with white and all these things like you, we just condemn them to hell. As though we too were not in the dark at some point. We're passing them on the streets. They were born as prophets. And so people like those, let me just educate the church a little bit. You see, when those people come to God and when God shows up like he showed up to uh, Saul when he was ready now for him. He showed up. He gave him an encounter. When these prophets get a revelation, when God ready to, is ready to use them or launch them into ministry, let me tell you something. Don't think. Don't bother think. So let me show you religion. Let me show you religion and what religion will do as opposed to what Christ will do. Religion will say, Oh, Rowan, you have to stay at this ministry and serve this ministry for five years before we can anoint you as prophet. And you have to be a doorman first. You have to spend one year at the door where you welcome people and hand them all these flyers. Then two years you have to spend being an usher. Then in the fourth year, we will upgrade you to doing altar work so you catch people. And in the fifth year, at the end of it, we will ordain you to be a prophet. The devil is a liar. He's walking with the, the word of God in his belly. He's walking, hallelujah. With instructions in his belly. He's walking with the fire. When God fills brother Rowan with his spirit. When God fills him with his power. He's ready for ministry. He's a prophet. You see we're as. When you're in deliverance, it will take training and maturity. But you know what? Maturity is needed in every gift. But if you are a prophet and God is speaking to you, if God says to you, tell sister Sharon that it's either she's with me or she's not for me. In the need training for that, the word came clearly. The word is intelligible. 
It doesn't need another interpretation. Even a babe, he could give that instruction. He's a prophet. Speak the word. You don't need training for that. As a prophet over time, his character will need to be built. His integrity and all those things, just like with the other gifts. The people gifts I'm speaking about now. Ephesians 4.11. But when you are called as a prophet, for instance, you are just a prophet. Man don't get the chance to determine when you get upgraded and when you step up. That's not man's business. God, through Christ, has called to himself five gifts he has. And he has given these gifts to the Christ, to, to the body of Christ, his body, the church. People are who they are before God. And that is why Prophet Rowan cannot go take up himself, say he's Pastor Rowan. No. Two different roles, two different expectations, two different sets of responsibility. This is why, for instance, people, you can find that you can confide in some people who are just young. Maybe you, you have somebody who you see God in the person and the person is young. You feel like you can tell them your whole life and just be open and honest. You don't, you, you don't feel like you need to hide anything because you feel like this person is confidential and you feel like this person has a heart to hear your story and, and to strengthen you and encourage you and pray with you. And this person is young. But when it comes to speaking with Elder Wright, you don't feel the same way. Every time you should open up to Elder Wright, it's like you're, you're hesitating. You have reservations because you, you don't feel the same way you do when you're talking to Brother Timothy. Could it be that Brother Timothy is a pastor? Perhaps God is not yet ready to reveal him to the larger congregation. But he's a gift already. The pastoral anointing is upon him. The grace of being a pastor rests heavily upon him. That's why you can talk to him the way you do and feel the way you do when you do talk. Because see, when it comes to the gifts of Christ, they don't come with age. When it comes to the gift of Christ, they're not relative to age. Religion makes us think that we need to graduate and be of certain age groups or age category in order to take on certain responsibilities. That's not how Christ thinks. Because it's not we doing it. It's not we age doing it. It's his spirit that's doing it. Furthermore, tell two people, age is not maturity. Because I know a lot of people who are up there in age and are not mature. So just because someone is older than you are does not mean they're more mature than you. Because age is not maturity. You will come across people who are younger than you, who are more mature than you are. Are you hearing me? We've digressed. Are we learning anything today? Are we learning? 
intercessors. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching, begin to ask God to reveal to you who the prophet is or prophets are on your land. There are some intercessors who were raised up to intercede for families. There are some who were raised up by God to intercede for church ministries. There are some who were raised up to intercede for a community. And that's why no matter how much you try to leave and go somewhere else to live, it's like there are always these blockages. While there are some intercessors who were raised up to intercede for the nation. If you're in the Caribbean, for the island. And we got to know who we are and what responsibilities have been given to us by the Spirit of God. If you are an intercessor called to intercede for Jamaica, I am saying to you, you know what? Let's do this. If you know, you know this. You know this. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. It's the spirit of God himself. That you have been appointed by the living God to intercede for the island of Jamaica. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Do this. You're going to send a WhatsApp message and you're going to type, I'm an intercessor for Jamaica. And you're going to put it in uppercase letters. You don't need to type anything else. Just just that. And you're going to send that to WhatsApp number plus one eight seven six three one nine five one six three. There are intercessors for Bahamas, Barbados. There are intercessors for Guyana, Suriname, Canada, the UK, the USA. The USA is huge. There are intercessors in states, different states. There are intercessors for the towns. By the way, let me say this to you. Intercessors are supposed to be working closely with prophets. Hopefully there is an arrangement that allows for some kind of connection. You see, when you are a prophet of the Lord, and an intercessor, and sometimes you are both, you are both a prophet and an intercessor, please try to get a circle. Find yourself in a circle of others who are like-minded, others who were called to do the same thing. Because when it comes on to taking on territories, you don't want to do that alone. When it comes on to fighting certain battles and engaging in certain warfares, you do not want to do that alone. Okay, the spirit of the Lord will reveal certain things to you, but you're going to need help in tackling these things. Just so you know, some stuff you can handle by yourself because you alone can chase a thousand. But if we're talking about national issues and especially if it's a big place, a big land, you're going to need help. Prophets. Let me just say this to you. One of your roles is this. So there are many roles that you have. But I will say this to you. If you are a prophet to a nation, you have a responsibility to speak the will of God for that nation, it needs to be revealed through you. Okay? You are the one who will make the people and the leader of the people know what Jehovah is saying to that nation. And you also have a role to play in praying through the will of God. 
And that's where your connection with intercessors come in. That's where you interacting with and associating with intercessors come in. Because when the Spirit of the Lord shows you certain things, you might need the help or the backup of some intercessors. This, let me just say, is not going to be what is happening in all instances or what is required in all instances. However, there will be times when depending on the magnitude or depth of the situation, you might need to call for help. Okay? We need to know. We need to start asking God to give us a revelation of who the prophet is. Because you see, if, let me just be very practical. You see, if an earthquake is going to come in your territory, come summer or come June, if you live in the Grand Cayman, or if you live in Haiti, and an earthquake is truly going to come, I'm sure you'd have love to know this long before the earthquake happens, don't it? Because whatever you would need to do to either escape the earthquake or prevent it, because perhaps your prayer can help God to stop it or change his mind you want to do it so you want to know you want to know who the lord is speaking through it shouldn't be that god is planning to shake a country but somebody is there telling you oh it's going to be great in the summer I see the flowers sprouting. I see all these nice stuff. When the actual plan is destructive. You don't want anyone telling you about safety when it's going to be destruction. You don't want to be listening to the person who is telling you that there's going to be X when it's, it's actually going to be Y. You need to know. Let's ask the Lord to reveal these things to us. Because when it comes to the land, Jehovah says he does nothing without showing it first to his prophets. Prime ministers, premiers, presidents, governor generals, you need to know who the prophets are in your territory. It's very important. You need to know because through these individuals, the purpose of God for that territory is revealed. And it's purpose for a certain time Perhaps what God wants to do now is different from what he did five years ago. Perhaps who God wants to lead now is different from who he allowed to lead five years ago. We will miss the mark when we don't know what is in the heart of God. And that's why we need to identify who the prophets are. Amen. Amen. Raise your hands right where you are. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to get vital information at this juncture. You know why, Father. By the way, there's a reason I've asked that the intercessors reach out. There's a reason for it, just so you know. 
there's a reason. I will not reveal what the reason is, but there is a reason. Not everything can be revealed online or in this particular context. Because, you know, truth be told, a lot of people who are watching, I can just see right through you. You watch with the wrong motive. There are many people who are here, they're just spying. The Lord has given me sight. I see you from afar off. Let me say this to you. Do not take on things that the Lord has not given to you. And stop trying to compete with people. Because in order for you to walk in somebody's shoe, you better be anointed to handle what comes with that shoe. I just leave it there, just so you know. Father, I thank you for the many hearts that have been touched tonight by the sword of the Spirit. I thank you that many people are beginning to question their purpose. I thank you, Father, that many are beginning to ask who they are in your eyes. Many people are becoming concerned about their purpose just because of what was talked about tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the stirring. I thank you, Father, for the revelation you are giving us. I thank you for the awakening that is occurring in this atmosphere because of what was spoken tonight. Someone is being challenged to rise to the occasion. The spirit of the Lord, let me just say this, is not pleased with a lot of things that are happening in Jamaica. Intercessors, I wanna hear from you. I'm led to do something. I'm led to do something here. Now, this is what I'm led to do. In my book, I've seen Jesus, which was published in 2021. And of course, whatever information is revealed in this book, It's pertaining to things that I would have seen, heard, and experienced, of course, before 2021, that year. In fact, I started writing in 2020. So everything in here happened before that time, including this that I'm about to read. On page 135 of my book, I've seen Jesus. On page 135. Under the theme, visions, dreams, and out-of-body experiences, this is chapter 7, one of my favorites. There is a sub-theme here called Deception from International Prophets. The Lord was speaking to me at this time when he was training me for ministry. And I was having a lot of experiences, a lot of visions, a lot of trances. When I heard, I heard mostly in trances or if he came and he opened up my ears and caused me to hear something audibly. I was having out of body experiences too. And these experiences, let me just say, sometimes were very frightening. All right. Now, the first time the Lord showed me something about the island, I documented it here in my book, I've Seen Jesus, and I will read it for you. It reads thus, I will now share with you visions concerning Jamaica and the world. 
The two visions I will be sharing are the ones that the Holy Spirit has inspired me to share, the second of which is yet to be fulfilled. The first vision is a direct message to leaders and heads of Christian ministries right across the island. In the vision, I saw an aircraft circling over the island. It was white as snow. My spirit was soon taken into the aircraft where I saw several international prophets who had been invited to minister on the island. The interesting thing about these prophets is that around the time of having the vision, they were all involved in some kind of scandal or controversy based on reports in the media. I watched the plane until it crashed into a heap of dirt, killing a man on the spot. I asked the Holy Spirit to explain the vision. He said, here's what the Holy Ghost said when I asked him to explain the vision to me. Again, I saw an airplane making circles over the island. And then after making a, a few rounds, it crashed. It just suddenly came down. Okay. And crashed. And a man got killed. Here is the interpretation. This is what the Holy Ghost said. He said, Jamaicans have a soft spot for international ministers. They lean more towards them than their own. Many of these international speakers were not sent by me. Yet there is a high demand for them to speak to my people and to prophesy to my people. He continued, Jamaicans better be warned for a time of great deception by international ministers is coming. They will destroy many, rob many, and contaminate many. Let the people be warned. End of message from the Holy Spirit. What can I say? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the churches. In my other vision, I shared with you one that pertains to not just Jamaica, but the world. I will not share this one with you. You got to buy the book. Because this, this, this vision, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. There is a deadly skin disease that is going to come. It shall come to pass. I'm not asking you because I was minding my own business in my room when Jehovah took me into the spirit and showed me along with six other prophets. I should even don't know who these people are. But in the realm of the spirit, I saw six other individuals with me and we all saw what he presented he presented this thing to come on a screen like he was making a presentation but it was like he opened up a huge screen before us and we were able to see everything that is going to happen are you hearing let's go back to the vision concerning the international prophets or the international ministers. The Spirit of the Lord says that we have, in other words, we have gotten married to, become friends with, partners with, some strange people before the sight of God. He doesn't know them. And we have gone to Africa to invite them to come. We've gone all over the world because them have some name and them depend on social media and them have all kind of following and views. And the next thing you know, they reach upon the holy pulpit. 
in the holy church that the living God has founded himself. How did they reach there? How? Because them are big names, so we bring them come. Because this one named Prophet Isaiah, we're going to bring Prophet Isaiah for lay hands on God's people. Now we now realize that Prophet Isaiah's hands are not clean. Are you understand what I'm saying? So often because of the big names and because of the brand. We put these people in positions and uh, allow them to do things that they were not qualified by God to do. They've desecrated his altar. There are many churches, okay, that got destroyed the moment an individual took the mic or went on that altar. The church has never been the same. We are going out and are going beyond to ensure that we invite all these people because when we put them on flyers, it will cause a lot of people to come into a church. When we put this person's face on the flyer, because we love to hear about international people coming, we're frightened for international people, but I'm here to tell you, Jamaica, you have been set apart by the living God. And what many people can get away with, you will not get away with it, Jamaica. God has invested a lot in Jamaica. And let me tell you something, he's not going to sit there and allow us to wreck what he has built. We need to stop being overly excited over all these international people. Stop being frightened for them. Some come from the north. Some come from the south, the west, the east. True because them have a little accent or accident. We're frightened. A lot of these people, all they have is just a bunch of punchlines, as I said before, but no anointing of the living God to break the yoke of his people. And we're calling them and, and pulling them on our altars, desecrating the altar of the spirit of the living God. That's why Sunday morning, nobody now getting no a healing or deliverance. Because Friday when the so-called prophet came into church, the prophet defiled the altar and everything that is up there. Jamaica no need no, no extra. Rakanda kituri bi onshekenda raba soto rokundi bi ata. The fullness of God. has been revealed on that island, to that island. And we're talking to fullness relative to how he has revealed himself to nations over the years. We don't lack. We need to stop frightening for people who sent them, who calls them by name. When they're talking about their God, is which God them talking about? Is which God them talking about? We have 
enough speeches on our island. We hear enough speech. You want speech? Go parliament. We're full of speech. We don't want no more speech on the altar. Shandi kabo soto rebe kata. We need the word rebe kusandi the altar. That's what we need on the altar. If it's lecture we need, we go to school. If it's eloquent speaking that we need, we go and function. But when it comes to the altar of the living God, you see, if it's jokes we need, we go and stand up comedy show. If it's laughing we need and DJing we need and all them things on the altar, if at that we need, make we go and dance our show. But you see, when we're coming at the house of the living God, it's a place of holiness and no man shall be glorified in that place. God is. God is. God is. He's the only one who's supposed to be exalted in that church. He's the only one who's supposed to be seen in that church and heard in that church. Yamandi kuribio shata ribibia sandiri ataka. Nobody wants to see no fancy hairstyle. Nobody na have time for see no long fingernail with orange and pink and green. You see anything while we are going up at the altar. You see if it gonna cause people to lose them focus, it will distract people in the congregation. Listen to me now, we're not ready yet. We need to come off of the Lord altar. Because right there, sir, you become the center of attention. And right there, sir, the fan dangles them and cause the people them, yeah, if you just they all over the place. So they're not hear no word because the focus is on you. Jamaica. You see what other people will get away with? You not get away with it. Matu ribio shande kasata yaboka. Cause to whom makuribiota much is given. Reketa tata. Much is required, saith the Lord. Sayeth the Lord. Are you hearing? Are you hearing? Are you hearing? Nataraba Zatoria Shataya. I look people in their eyes and I speak whatever the Spirit of the Lord has put in me to speak. There's too much flesh. In the Lord's house. That's why we ain't seeing. That the prophetess we're trying to get to come to the convention. Is not right. That's why we ain't seeing. That the spirit that is operating behind prophet Mark. Is a spirit of divination. We ain't seeing him because there's so much flesh. You see this international mentality? You see this international mentality? If we don't fix it and get rid of it, we're going straight into judgment for it. And leaders who are calling these things forth or who are endorsing these things, we shall go into judgment before the living God for this. Because we are better off without a lot of these individuals. Many of them come, as the Lord says, to rob from your people or from his people. Yes, they're yours, but they're really his. Many have come to trick them. 
Many have come to steal and to contaminate their anointing. Some of them, the moment they claim that they're praying at the altar, it's like the, 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 the intercessor can't pray again. Something just wrong ever since that person came to church. Ever since that person came to the so-called ministry, some of you have no prayer life anymore. Some of you can't see anymore. Ever since them claimed, them put them hand by you and I put olive oil. But instead of you seeing more, you become blind. You ain't seeing anything. You're not dreaming again. You're not remembering what changed. Because what you didn't know is that it is a divine opposing as a prophet or a prophetess. Are you hearing me? <laughs> in case, in case you haven't gotten the revelation. <laughs> I'm not a people pleaser. I speak whatever the Lord tells me to speak. And I don't punch. flock the flock I don't know who I'm speaking to but you see when we allow these outsiders to mess with his flock mm, the spirit of the Lord he has a matter he has a bone with you who are these strangers you have called to lay hands on his people? Who are these strangers you have put upon his holy altar? Who are these strangers giving you instructions on what to do when God has already instructed you in this regard? Who are these strangers? Who are these people? Jamaica? Your sins have come up before the living God. We don't lack the knowledge of God. We don't lack the presence of God because it was right in my room in Jamaica that I saw the Lord. The second time that is. Right in Jamaica. I saw him the first time. So God has something very special going on between him and Jamaica. Why then are we still going to all these people when we are sick? Why? Why are we still getting up in the early mornings to travel from the western part of the island to the eastern part because we want to see a man and the man is not Jesus? Why? These are the wickedness and let me tell you something. You see, a lot of the people who are doing these things, they identify as Christians. People who should know better. They are the ones who are participating in a lot of these practices. Let me tell you something. The judgment of God is coming to us first. You see, if we don't turn, you see, if we don't turn first, tell two people, is we first have to turn. And if we don't turn before the living God, his wrath is going to be felt. There's going to be a shaking, shaking, there will be, there will be. 
if we do not get our acts together. God has invested too much. And to whom much is given, much is required. So make we stay the farm fool ourselves. Let me tell you something lastly. His name is Elkanah. Elkanah. Elkanah is his name. Do you know what that means? He's a jealous God. He's jealous. He's jealous. Elkanah is his name. Elkanah's wrath is going to be felt if we don't get our acts together soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, let your will and purpose be accomplished. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for refreshing our spirits with your word. Thank you, Father. Is there anyone who wants to say yes to Jesus this evening? Is there anyone who wants to say yes to Jesus? And let me just say this to people. You see, when you come on here, on this broadcast, the devil will, of course, from time to time, send his angels or his agents into the comments, in the comment section. I should in. I'm not distracted by them. When God sends me to do something, I do it. I don't look at them. I do not focus on those people. Therefore, you do not allow Satan's agents to distract you. Because notice they're not distracting me. All right? So always be on the lookout for them. And make sure you don't allow them to rob you of what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Because they will come. They will come. Say after me, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I confess that thou art the Son of the living God. Wash me. Cleanse me. Heal me. I choose to serve you from now onward. Come into my heart and into my life. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you, everyone. Put your hands together for the Holy Spirit. Put your hands together for the ways in which he moved in our midst this evening. To God be the glory. Now, for those people who have sent friend, uh, friend requests, not friend requests, but may I say messages to the WhatsApp number, I just want you to know that I haven't gotten around to all the messages. There are so many. Please just be patient with me, I beg you. There is an overwhelming number of messages coming in daily. Please. If it's urgent, yeah, let me know, but... Otherwise, make sure you're watching the healing services that were done some two weeks ago. There was a service that covers any condition you can think of. Go to the YouTube channel, Shadeen Anglin. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe and turn on your notification before you leave. If you're watching on TikTok, make sure you subscribe to the page and you hit that like button right now. Make sure you're telling someone about 
This broadcast is streamed every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, which means tomorrow we're going to be here again at 7.30. Remember, look out for those friend requests you're getting from these pages that were created in my name. I do not have an orphanage. I do not live in Africa. Okay, so there's no way I could be asking you to send any money to me and give you some African address. I'm not in Africa. Come on, people, let's discern. I'm not texting anybody any prophecy. You see, any prophecy I have to give anybody, it's right here. It's through here. If you don't hear me advertise a number, if it's a strange number, you never hear me talk about it. It's not me. It's the scammers who have created these fraudulent pages pretending to be me they're imposters so look out for them okay now the section of the website that says make a donation it's down it's been down for the last few hours those of you who normally tithe through that method for the next few days please just send me the whatsapp and i'll give you the zell information instead that section is down for now. They're working on something. They're fixing something. So I thought I'd let you know. So tithers, you know how to find me. 876-319-5163. As a matter of fact, if you are a tither of the ministry, can you just send me a message with tither, please? I want to know and I want to meet with you guys. Please. Thank you. God bless you. See you tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. I love you. Again, the WhatsApp number, plus one, eight seven six three one nine five one six three. The other WhatsApp number ending in 7272 is down a little bit. So all messages will go to the one ending in 5163 for now. I love you all so much. See you tomorrow for another amazing word from the living God. God bless you.